Hello everyone. Today I'd like to review a pair of spotting scopes. Uh, the scopes that you see in front of you are both 100 millimeters, and uh, on the right hand side you've got the Conus 20 to 60 power, and then on the left in the back you've got the Celestron Ultima uh, 22 to 67 power. Both of these spotting scopes are in about the same price range. The Conus uh, I purchased for $299 and the Celestron was about uh, 275 so they're pretty similar in price points and uh, similar in features so I thought I would do a, a quick side-by-side -side comparison to maybe help some of you guys out that are uh, thinking about purchasing either of these uh, spotting scopes. So um, let's go ahead and I'll do a little feature comparison. I'll talk a bit about the uh, the lens quality uh, the, the overall construction quality or the build quality of the spotting scopes and then I'll give you uh, my opinion on um, which one is, is a better value. Um, so let's go ahead and just move on to, let's start with uh, build quality. Um, really, uh, you know, these scopes are pretty, pretty similar in terms of their features. Uh, what really sets them apart, in my opinion, after uh, using these scopes for a couple of days, uh, you know, I went out uh, bird watching uh, at a, a nearby estuary uh, that, that's uh, just a great place to really test the, the long range of these scopes, you know, the, the 60 power. Um, and uh, and I also went to a, a nearby lake for a little bit uh, closer spotting. And, um, one of the things I really notice about these two scopes is that the the conus on the right hand side has a lot of great uh, usability features. Um, the The focus ring right here is uh, very easy uh, to to pick up. Uh, you know your targets like a bird or whatnot. It's it's uh, quick and easy to focus with. I found that the Celestron. Uh, the the focus ring was a little more coarse so you could easily come in and out of focus when you were trying to for example focus in on a an egret at a, you know 200 yards or something uh, so i did like the focus knob on the conus better it seemed like it was easier to focus it was a little more uh, granular uh, and, and, and it made um you know focusing in on uh, moving objects a little bit simpler so i just call it uh, a bit more ergonomic also, I'm going to give edge to the conus on the eyepiece. Uh, the eyepiece on the conus uh, is uh, is very very smooth. Um, it uh, it doesn't make any any sort of noise or doesn't feel gritty. Whereas the one on the Celestron here, uh, it's it's quite coarse. Uh, you can actually feel the metal parts uh, rubbing up against each other when you're moving the eyepiece. So I'll give you a quick uh, uh, zoom in here of that eyepiece. So you see it's 67 power um, down to 22 power. And you can kind of feel, it feels gritty when you're moving it. Not a big deal, uh, just uh, shows a little bit more refinement in the conus than in with the Celestron. Um, the the Celestron, uh, just kind of like a personal opinion, looks a little bit cooler. Um, it's a little bit slimmer, and it's also a little bit lighter. I will uh, post in the comments on this video uh, the the actual weight. Uh, if my my kitchen scale will will uh, handle it, um, they might be too heavy. But um, overall, you, here you can see the width. The uh, Celestron is a little bit longer, and um, I believe that's due to the eyepiece design. Uh, you'll see that the Celestron is a straight eyepiece, whereas the Conus is a 45-degree eyepiece. Uh, it's really a pre personal preference, you know, which one you like. I prefer the angled eyepiece, uh, especially if your tripod is not tall enough. I'm a pretty tall, uh, pretty tall, pretty tall guy, so. Uh, you know, I need at least like a six foot, um, you know, six foot, six foot two tripod that will get that, that scope high up enough for you to be able to view straight through it. Uh, so it makes it a little bit simpler, um, to, to have the 45 degree 
uh, eyepiece for me because my tripod is not that tall. So I found myself kind of having to to bend over uh, and kind of arch my back and it kind of tired me out after a little bit and I wasn't quite as uh, stable with, with the straight through eyepiece. Um, but anyways, moving along to the build quality, I'll show you guys a couple other parts uh, that, um, a couple other things that set these scopes apart. First of all, the, the Celestron uh, does come with eyepiece covers. Um, let me go run and grab it for you really quickly here. It, uh, it's not a very impressive lens cover. Um, it's, it's kind of cheap. It's actually very cheap. Uh, and um, it fits on the front like so. And it, it does that a lot. It, it likes to fall off a lot. Uh, that wasn't me being clumsy, but... You know, it, it, uh, you know, throwing in the back of your car, anytime you touch it, it will see that it'll just pop itself off. So if you're, you know, you're pulling it out of your car and it rubs on some fabric or something, the front lens cover comes off very, very easily on this. It's, it's almost worthless. I mean, it's, it's, it's so easy to take off. You don't even have to use the tabs on the side, the spring loaded tabs to, to pull the lens cover off. You can just yank it off easily. Uh, also, the rear eyepiece cover that came with this was uh, too small, and um, it, it, I just don't even use it because it's it's pretty much worthless. So the lens covers on the the Celestron are, are pretty poor. Uh, the Conus, uh, definitely an improvement. Uh, you've got a big 100 millimeter lens cover here, and notice how you also have a sunshade that pulls out. That's a real nice feature on this scope. And the, uh, the front lens cover is a pretty tight fit and it tends to stay put. The rear lens cover, I would say is so-so. It, it does fall off pretty easily. It's just a plastic cap. So an upgrade for a rear lens cover might be in order on that. Um, moving into the optical features, uh, I would say that well, there's a couple of different little talking points. I'll start here. I actually have some notes for this because uh, it's it's a pretty important pretty important point. But before we move on, I'd, I'd give the build quality score, uh, you know, for the Conus at a like a B plus, <clears throat> and I'd, I'd give the Celestron kind of like a C maybe. Uh, it is definitely inferior as far as build quality goes to the Conus. I like the the ergonomics of the uh, focus wheel of the eyepiece uh, lens covers are better and um, and then the sunshade is a real big big bonus the nice built-in sunshade uh, I just you know the the if you get used to it especially you know if you're just starting out with spotting scopes and you've never looked behind one before the Celestron is going to be a little more difficult to focus right out of the box. Uh, I think once you get used to spotting scopes, you know, that point's going to kind of be moot. Um, but I did find the Conus to be a little bit easier. Excuse me for a minute here. So moving along to optics, uh, I did have, I, like I said, the opportunity to test these uh, spotting scopes out at the nearby estuary as well as uh, a lake right by my house it's got tons of different birds you know ducks and, and magpies and um, you see some grand egrets every once in a while some geese all kinds of cool stuff uh, and one thing that I really noticed about the uh, the Celestron right off the bat is because I actually got the Conus first and then I bought the Celestron second, and I was used to looking through the Conus for a day or two. And then um, I tried out the Celestron, and I noticed that with the Celestron, the eye relief is very, very minimal. Uh, the, the eye relief on the Conus, I'd say, is, is definitely superior to the eye relief on the Celestron. And um, going back to, you know, someone who's new to spotting scopes, maybe this is your first spotting scope, and, and it probably is in, in this price point. You know, I mean, we're not talking about like the thousand dollar Pentaxes and, and, and Kawas and not to mention some of the Zeiss and Swaros and all those super, you know, multi-thousand dollar spotting scopes. But um, the eye relief on 
on the Celestron was sort of an issue for me. Um, it comes with this rubber uh, grommet around the eyepiece and at minimum power of 22 power your eye is going to be bumping that plastic grommet. So what I did is I just kind of like took it off. You can just peel it off real simple and chances are you're going to lose it anyways. So uh, I just looked through it without that grommet on there. Uh, so the eye relief is pretty small on the Celestron and it is significantly smaller than the Conus. And at, um, at full power, you know, 60 power on the Celestron, your, your bri the bridge of your nose is likely going to be bumping up against the outer ring of the eyepiece here. Uh, I found that happening almost all the time at high power. You've really got to get your eye, you know, pressed up against this eyepiece here. And so it can be a little uncomfortable. Um, and, and, you know, in a comparison, the Conus didn't have any problems at all with eye relief. Now, as far as optical clarity goes, uh, both of these scopes have excellent optical clarity. Uh, there is really not a clear winner. And I'll kind of go over categories of, of optical clarity. Um, I talked about eye relief, but uh, let's talk about brightness. Uh, I would give a slight edge in brightness to the Conus. Uh, I noticed looking at um, some objects at about 400 yards away, uh, like some cars and a couple of uh, people walking along a path, you could see their, their sweatshirts were a little bit brighter with the uh, Conus than the Celestron, but it was um, not significant. Uh, the, the, the brightness, and I'm kind of mixing brightness and color here at the same time, guys. Uh, brightness and color, I'd give the edge to the Conus. A little bit more brightness, a little bit more color, but nothing tremendously significant. Uh, however, with the Conus, when I was looking at some, some, uh, some great egrets out in the estuary, I noticed a lot of purple fringing on you know the the silhouette of those white bright bright white birds with uh you know like some dark mud in the background or, or, or dark blue water in the background the conus definitely exhibits a lot more purple fringing than the celestron so if um you know if that purple fringing really bothers you the celestron uh definitely wins out in that category and um, even at minimal power, at 20 power on the Conus, you can still see a little bit of purple fringing, uh, especially on like railings and rooftops. And then it's very apparent at uh, you know your 60 power. Um, but uh, overall, I, I think that uh, the lens quality of both of these scopes is actually very, very good. And you're not gonna go really too wrong with either of them. Uh, I did do a test uh, looking at a license plate at 415 yards, uh, confirmed with uh, Google Earth. Um, you know, checking out a, a couple of uh, license plates on cars, and and I could read uh, the license plate at 415 yards very clearly at maximum power with both of these scopes. And um, and so that was I was actually pretty impressed with that. First, I read the, the license plate with the Conus, and I was like, wow, that's that's impressive, you know. I wonder if I can do it again with a Celestron, and, and I could. And I actually reviewed these guys side by side. So, um, you know, your atmospheric conditions, I kind of liken it to uh, snorkeling. I don't know if, if, if you guys have been uh, snorkeling or if you're really into snorkeling or whatever, but basically, you know, how far you can see underwater just depends on the visibility of the water. You know, one day you'll be able to see 50 or 75 feet, and the next day, I mean, you'll be able to see like 10 feet. And it really just has to do with the, uh, the clarity of the water. And the atmosphere is very similar to that. Um, you know, taking, taking a spotting scope out on, on one day and, you know, rating like one scope and then taking a different scope out to the, maybe the exact same spot, but on a second day, you can have totally different results. Um, just based on atmospheric conditions. So uh, today I did take both of them out to lake at the same time and um, and, and they both performed very well. Um, and like I said, they both could read a license plate at 400 plus yards. 
Um, what else do I have here? So we went over brightness, we went over color, we went over uh, clarity. Uh, I'd rate both of these as equally uh, clear. Uh, you know, I, I'm kind of right now leaning to maybe giving the Celestron just a you know percent or two better score on clarity, but it really depends on your situation because if you're trying to acquire a target like a moving bird, uh, you know, or a, a car or whatever it is, something that's that's moving, and you have to do it quickly, the Conus is going to be easier to do it with because the focus uh, the focus control is uh, is better in my opinion. Um, However, the Celestron, you know, if you have something that's a stationary uh, subject, I think that you're going to get just a tad better clarity out of it, mostly uh, due to the fact that it has less uh, purple fringing, and so I find that you just get a little bit less glare out of it. Uh, one thing to note on the um, clarity subject is uh, the Celestron, uh, I did notice, had more of a uh, a blue ring on the outside of the lens when you're looking through it, especially in very bright conditions. Uh, you'll see that the, the, the outside of the lens, when you're looking through the eyepiece, there'll actually be a blue ring surrounding the entire uh, objective. And, um, and it's especially prevalent in, in very bright conditions. When you move to lower light conditions, I found it went away. But um, you know, looking through the eyepiece, you will see that blue ring, and it can be a little distracting. Now, in comparison, the Conus did not exhibit any blue fringing around the outside of the uh, the lens, the objective lens. However, you know, when this is when you're looking through the eyepiece, obviously. However, it. Um, when you're looking at the very outer ring of, uh, of your field of view, it was a little bit blurry. So this is, I'm talking just like the last, you know, inch of your field of view, last inch or two. That's a little bit blurry. So, uh, you know, take blurry over uh, blue, blue uh, kind of reflective ring <laughs> and kind of just pick which one you like better. Personally, the, the blue ring was a little bit distracting for me. And um, so that was, was one thing I did want to note in the review. Okay, I think we're about wrapped up here. Let me just see if I missed anything. Um, overall, yeah, I think we've got everything. Overall, I think both of these scopes are uh, good values. Um, right now, I'm leaning towards the Conus. And the reason why I'm leaning towards it is even though I think it's got just slightly inferior glass compared to the Celestron, I mean, we're really splitting hairs here too on this. I mean, they're both very, very good uh, scopes with very, very good glass clarity and glass quality. But um, I, I, right now, my preference is, is leaning towards the Conus because just because of the build quality it seems to be a little bit more of a user-friendly scope to me um, of primary importance to me is the eye relief and the ability to focus quickly on a subject so I think that those two things make a, uh, a, a big difference and then you know little things would be like kind of the annoying lens covers on the Celestron um, and uh, you know, I'll take the little bit of extra weight right now. It's not that big of a deal for me. But it's a pretty close race. Um, anyway, so that's just my observation so far. Uh, just to give you guys maybe a little bit more information on your next purchase. And um, I'm going to continue testing these scopes. And so I'll update this review uh, with a little bit extra information in the notes. All right. Thanks, guys. If you have any questions, uh, please let me know. I'll do my best to help you out.